and welcome to Best in Tesla. What is Tesla's secret sauce and why is this also a part of a very different end game than just making millions of electric vehicles and getting the world to renewable energy? That is what we're going to take a look at in today's video. So grab some popcorn and let's dive right in. So let's start by talking a bit about Tesla's secret sauce and what it is that really sets them apart from the rest. And after that, we're going to talk a bit about why this is a part of a different endgame for Tesla than just being the one who makes the most electric vehicles. So what sets Tesla apart? First of all, their motor and batteries. Sandy Monroe, the car expert, has said that Tesla motor is like magic. But what makes this motor so special? Tesla made a permanent magnet machine, but the magnet in the motor is not just one magnet. It is made up of many different magnets glued together in very specific way into what's called a hull back array. And as Sandy Monroe said, he can't even re-engineer the damn thing. Anyways, you can see there's four stripes. Oh, and each one is a each different... Each one is a different magnet, and oh. each one has got polarity in a different direction. So, when I first seen this, we were, we were on the shop So, floor. wait a minute. You're saying north and north and south and south are next to each other, yeah, so but, they're fighting but each they, other. But they also have to be twisted. So, you're turning them this way and that way, but you're also turning them radially as well. It's, it's kind of complicated, and the different ways of turning it will give you different power outputs. This is, a, this is a science all by itself. So anyway, there's four stripes in here. There's four magnets glued together. There's a lot of people that know about this but don't do anything with it because, oh, it takes a lot of effort. So I'd never seen it before, never heard of it before. Anyway, myself and Al Steyer, who runs the BIC, or my benchmark center, we're standing there and we're looking at it and I'm saying, well, how come this thing's lighter and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and cost less, but it, it has more power, what the hell? And we're sitting there arguing about this, that, and the next thing. And I'm looking down and I said, hey, what's those stripes on the end of the magnets? And Al looks at it and he says, why, well, I, I don't know. So we pull a magnet out. I put it in a vise. And I said, well, let me give it a little tap. Maybe it'll break. It, just, it blew up. It was like unbelievable. These things really don't like each other. I don't know how they glue them together. I was just going to ask, what kind of glue is that? I don't know, but it's good glue, a damn good glue. <laughs> if you need to fix your shoe, this is the kind of stuff you need. But at the end of the day, um, uh, that was what started it, and then we started looking around, and we've got friends now in Italy that were really excited about this, and we work a lot with Chrysler. Chrysler got all the data. They had bought in the report already anyway, so, um, so they, they got all the information we had on it. But the big thing is, <laughs> I can't reverse engineer this damn thing. It, every, every twist and every turn has little things in it, little nuances, that the only way you can find out about it is if you're there when they glue them together. So this, this is really, really cool. I really think that this is the, the game changer. And Tesla's motors are smaller, cheaper, and more efficient than the competition. As we can see here from Monroe's comparison, the Tesla motor is lighter and cheaper. And as we know, they are more efficient. So the competition can't even copy Tesla's motor because even with the damn magnet in their hands, they don't even know how to re-engineer it. And combine this with the lead in battery technology, which is also cheaper and more efficient, as we talked about before, the whole powertrain is just much cheaper to produce and much more efficient and powerful. And Tesla are just about to show us all the new 1 million mile batteries and how to scale up the production of batteries to a whopping 1 terawatt hour a year. No one else is even close to all this. And then there is software. Tesla is one of the first car companies to really focus and be serious about software and making it themselves and changing the whole way the user interface works in a car. Before it was all a lot of buttons and dials, but in a Tesla you have everything in, on a big screen in the middle of the car and it works like you would expect coming from the world of computers, smartphone and iPad. 
and it runs smooth and it can be updated over the air. This is really the iPhone to Blackberry moment. You don't need all these buttons, just push the screen and you can make all the different buttons you want. And therefore, you can also change the whole UI down the road if you come up with a better idea, as Tesla has done. Can't do that with traditional cars, like adding a button down the road. This is something where Tesla really sticks out in the auto industry. They have hired some of the best programmers in the world, something big autos like Volkswagen is trying to do, but having difficulties with. Just look at the software problems they have with the ID3. And this software and over the air update is something the owners of the Teslas are really loving. It makes the car just so much more than a car. It's a smart car that can get better over time. This is just such a big factor to why Tesla has such a strong brand and fan base. But there is a thing that is going to change everything. I have made a lot of videos about what will happen in 10 years and why you won't buy a gas car in 10 years and where's the EV in 10 years and so on. But all this really doesn't matter when we solve full self-driving. Because I still believe, Elon, that we are not that far from getting there, maybe a year or two, or maybe five, but I definitely think we're going to have it solved in 10 years' time. But whenever this is solved, it really will change the whole transportation industry. First of all, this will boost the sales of Tesla like nothing else in the beginning. Now you can get a car with a chauffeur that can drive you home from your night out. No more need for a taxi anymore. No need for you and your wife discussing who can drink and who can drive. The car will drive. You can both drink. All good times. But not only will Tesla, if they of course solve this first, be the only car you want, but the robo-taxi service will also make sure that everyone can get one. Maybe not own one, but you can all call a robo-taxi whenever you need it. But you will probably also be able to have some kind of subscription-based thing, not just a taxi service, but where you pay a monthly fee. So you always have a Tesla at your disposal whenever you need it. You just summon it with your app. So you don't need to buy one for, let's say, 200000 or whatever they're going to be worth. But maybe just, who knows, just a couple of hundred bucks a month. Now, most people are going to be able to drive in a Tesla, but maybe not so many people will buy them anymore. Just like when we went from DVDs to streaming. I had a hard time thinking about streaming and not owning my movies. I had a big collection. so <laughs> And the same for, for music, for that matter. It, it felt wrong not owning the music, but just stream it, because then it wasn't mine. But... We all got used to it, and we all now streaming Spotify, YouTube Music, Apple Music, whatever, and watching movies on Netflix and HBO and so on. It all became very normal, and I think the same thing will happen with not owning a car, but summon it when you need it. So I think this is the end game for Tesla and why they're pushing so hard to get there first, because this will change everything. And that is why they're working on a 1 million miles battery, because that will be perfect for a self-driving robo-taxi that will drive a lot of miles. 1 million miles are way too much for your everyday Joes. Almost no one drives 1 million miles in the car. And the software they're so good at is going to be the key for the self-driving future. That is what it's all about, collecting data and getting the neural network to learn how to drive from that. And when this is solved, Tesla, and only Tesla, can just flick a switch and boom, you got one million self-driving cars on the road. So even if someone solved the full self-driving at the same time, they have to make all the cars from that point on, but Tesla will already have a million cars ready. And I still don't think anyone is close to Tesla when it comes to full self-driving. If you believe data is the holy grail of full self-driving, as I do, then there is Tesla and no one else. The rest are just so far behind on getting real-life data that is not even funny. 
because we do need this. <laughs> yeah, humans and driving. So Tesla will solve full self-driving, if you ask me. And that is their big end game, because this is just going to change the whole industry. And you got to remember that every Tesla sold since 2016 have everything they need for the full self-driving. And everything forward, of course, is going to have full self-driving. That would also mean the Cybertruck and the Semi-Truck. So not only normal cars playing robo-taxi for you every day, but every company using a lot of trucks is going to want to have the Tesla semi-truck. So they don't need to pay a driver anymore. And every construction company is going to want the robust cyber-truck that can actually pick up six people and drive them to work and drop them off afterwards as well. And so on. There are just so much potential for full self-driving when it's ready, maybe, in a couple of years. And at that point, Tesla will already have millions of Tesla cars on the road, the Cybertruck will be out, and so will the semi-truck. And all they have to do at that point is to make an over-the-air update, and boom, the self-driving revolution has begun. The fleet wakes up with an over-the-air update. That's all it takes. I think this is going to make Tesla one of the biggest companies on the planet with everything else they have going on as well. But what do you think? Do you think the 1 million mile battery is just for your everyday Joes? Or are the full self-driving not going to happen? Or will Tesla not be the first to get it? Or what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Before I go, I need to make a big shout out to my new Patreon, Glenn Mullen. Thank you so much for your support, Glenn. Really appreciate it. If you also want to support the show to help me get better quality video out for you guys, head over to patreon.com slash bestintesla and support the show for as little as a buck a month. But it really helps me out a lot. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this about Tesla every week and have a weekly news episode every Sunday about Tesla, Elon Musk and everything in between. So hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. If you're still watching, thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, take care of there and be nice.